place to start, right? He's not a good place to end. That's a very good thing. He's a great place to start because he, he had a petri dish and he had a sample and it was a good sample and then it just didn't do anything. Um, so, you know, when, when you're looking at writing a character, that's a strong thing about character. One of the things that really pissed me off about him is he has a tendency to punish these girls for having sex. Like, every time one of these girls has sex, it's like Marvel or two or And then there was this other factor, which was the embodiment of shame. Uh, and it's how he would be the moral on this. Um, but I feel like if, if you're going into this as a writer, it, looking at him as a, like, just a person that comes up often and being strong and not strong being the characters, um, start with your own character, please. it was mentioned that there was a lack thereof. And to me, growing up, as a, a term, the term is actually being phased out, which I don't necessarily disagree with, but as a tomboy um, black girl growing up, all I saw was lipstick tuck bills. And they were all white. Um, they were all very light. They were all very tiny. They were all very white. Even Storm, even though it was incredibly insulting to Iman, Iman, and I, I apologize to her, but you know when Iman went into the modern world, one of the things that um, excuse me, agency told her was like, oh, you're like a white woman dipped in chocolate, and that, and trust me, it's it's, it's insulting, but it, it also is a caveat that a lot of people don't want to address is that there is a definition physically of what a woman should look like. And the range in which we appreciate uh, attractiveness or toughness or where, where we believe a woman to come from different caveats and be able to express kind of, uh, how can I say it, like different facets of personality, it still has to look like a certain thing. And to me, just like <laughs> Jessica Jones, I it's taken me a very long time to watch that show because physically she still fits the bill. box. Well, she fits that box. And, and as a, as, I'm sorry, just to, just to, uh, just really quickly, uh, as a black woman writer, there are there is the black woman trope of the, us being tough. And to, uh, the sap, there's so many, you know, different stereotypes and, and, and well, not so many, there's like four. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> there's like four, so, and I'm yeah. sorry that that's funny. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, you know, having that, that, those specific slots, I agree that the, the mean girls don't just happen. And I agree that there needs to be more, uh, impetus for us to want to know more about those mean girls. But the, the having the extra characteristic as a woman of color, being femme as a woman of color, or looking feminine as, woman of, uh, as a woman of color still fits into what is honestly a Eurocentric definition of what we will accept as from a woman. So all of my characters that I write are butch as fuck. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> they look butch as fuck. I don't care. They're broad shouldered. I am broad shouldered. I'm a big woman. I'm 5'9, which is not that tall, but still tall for a woman. They have big lips, they have big noses. They do not look like a black a white woman dipped in chocolate. So in that definition, I will write a hard-looking woman who is black as fucking night so that she can kick ass and still fuck the dude. Like I, I think that there is Okay, and, it, and, and it's something that I will, you know, bring to another kind of uh, uh, arena, but having a, a panel like this 
and not having anyone of color. And I, I, I do apologize, I am kind of assuming it's in a certain sense. I am biracial, it makes you feel better. I'm the whitest person here, but I'm against Caldera, really. So, you know. um, but yeah, it seems a bit odd. There's, it's a huge, because there, it's, a, it's a facet that in, within literature and within media that is ignored. And when it's when it's introduced and when it's for diversity's sake and when it's kind of shoved in there, they look like Halle Berry. Mm-hmm. I don't look like Halle Berry. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. The characters that I write don't look like Halle Berry. Okay. So I get I get that we have we're now starting to see more personality traits within women, but the fact that there's now it's 2016 and we're talking about that there's more personality traits within women and there's no women of color on this panel and the fact that all the women that you guys have literally have talked about in depth not necessarily you didn't mention the fact that the new Iron Man is going to be a black 15 year old woman but yeah, she, and it's mentioned that she's written by a white dude but the fact that we're in 2016 talking about these different personality traits these personality traits that make us more human as women, the fact that we're not talking about women of color, and the fact that there is another portion to that that we are blatantly ignoring within the discussion makes it complete, makes it so incomplete to me. Sorry, I'm sorry, I get passionate about that. I mean, I completely agree. We all agree. I really agree. The truth, which is when there are women of color, they're often exoticized yes. in the male. Yes. And that's huge. Yeah. It's, I mean, it's. I kind of like want to give you a chair. Just yeah. Like, <laughs> <laughs> so, here, here, here. <laughs> no, I really appreciate you saying this because you're right. There is, you know, there, all, all of us look like how we look. Yeah. And that is a big gap in this conversation. And I'm really glad that you said that. Thank yeah. you very much. Um, yeah. No, I mean, and, and it's true, like, um, I was going to say on the Jessica Jones front, like, I have a friend who is very much offended by that show, completely sort of erasing uh, Latinos in New York. You know, she's <laughs> like, this is not my neighborhood, you know, uh, because almost all of the supporting characters on that show are white. Oh my God, I feel like we're going to end up being a mem on, like, Twitter of, like, this is what's wrong with publishing. Hi! <laughs> As you brought up, you know, the issues with the background characters of Jessica Jones, which I can't attest to, like Daredevil. Daredevil, yeah. Uh, as much as I love Daredevil, because I love Byronic, I like asshole characters. Explain how they became an asshole, I'm there. Um, and I love dark characters, and I love the tone of Daredevil. But looking at it, you still have Every woman of color that's been in the show has been nothing but a prop up for Matt Murphy later. Yeah, Rosario Dawson in particular is particularly one of the coolest characters. And we're also not talking about the fact that Daredevil is based on a hugely offensive trope that blinds people. I mean, I I, I have a a blind friend who gets tons of hate every time she tweets about how problematic Daredevil is for her Um, and the fact that it is the blind person with superpowers. You know these heightened senses, and um, that that is something that is never discussed in the wider culture. You know, I mean, we have a long way to go on all this stuff. I don't think any Daredevil. Yes. Oh, <laughs> I mean, he is just a jerk as well. A lot, a lot of the time. Um. Well. Yeah, I was gonna 
think, you know, like some of the fierce women I know are, you know, are domestic goddesses. You know, I, I don't know. I think I think I think there's a lot of question because it's automatically assigning um, I mean the point of the perception is there that these that these feminine characters are so lesser. But the only thing you can do is make a fully fleshed out character. She does Strong is not a great bitch. Sorry, it does it. It can. This is the fact that Cass and the conversation we were having earlier. And the uh, strong female character being like filed under kicks ass and yeah. has a weapon and now we're done. I spent 25 years as a physical therapist before I started writing. And that is a profession that's 80% women. So I spent my entire professional life working with and around some of the most amazing women I've ever met in all of their variety of strength and flaw and, and fierceness and gentleness. I, I think if, if, if you are honest to the variety of personality types and you can view each character as an individual, then you have a thousand kinds of women to write. I think that's a great point rather than uh, trying to make a checklist of it's not a problematic idea, there is no checklist, but you also see this complaint, people will say, oh well, how can this character be a feminist woman of color who also has a disability, like, it's just not realistic, it's too diverse, <laughs> like, yeah, like, uh, we all know those people, and when, you know, these are, like, this is where, like, a lot of the readers still are, and it is unfortunate, and it is our job as writers to push that, and push those people, like, to realize how hypocritical they are. what makes a woman protagonist, and I think one of the things about strength is that it comes from the choice we make. Um, and so I'm interested to hear if you have uh, favorite examples or things that you can think of about when your female protagonist or protagonist who you love have to become the female protagonist. What points of strength have they had that, that choice that they have that said, I am the protagonist, this is my story. What's funny is you never answer this question. No. <laughs>